Folks, in older CPUs, older PLCs, what you did was you plugged them in, you hooked up your programming cable, and you went to the software and you programmed it. There wasn't a whole lot of configuration to be done. And with Doomore, there's not a lot of configuration to be done either. You can plug it in, it comes with default settings. But if I did want to adjust the serial port setting, or I did want to adjust an Ethernet port setting, or say I wanted to address the I.O. rack manually, there was all these different menus to go into to do all those adjustments with older PLCs. So what have you guys done? What's the developers done with Doomore and designer software that'll make that easier for me? We have a one-stop configuration called system configuration um, on the toolbar. Let's bring it up and see it. Okay. The system configuration, there are multiple sections. Okay. And the list is on the left-hand side here. The, the key one, the, the first one is CPU configuration. Um, that's, that's the most important one. Then dependent on that is the IO configuration. Then what's dependent on, upon that is the modules that you have in your IO configuration. Then below that is device configuration, IO mappings, and okay. memory configuration. Well, just let's look at this right now, what you have on the screen, the, the, the CPU configuration. That's where I go if I want to adjust the serial port settings or the Modbus TCP server settings and set the time, set the watchdog. That's all under the CPU configuration. Now, all of this is under one menu called system configuration, correct? Yes. And the next one down is IO configuration. Let's look at that. Yes. And that gives you me a picture of the IO rack. Yes. It actually shows me what's sitting out there. Yes. It's, it's an actual tree where you can go in here and set up some manual uh, addressing if you want to, but most of the time you just want to uh, automatically scan your base. So you just plug it in and it works. Right. But if you want to come in here and tinker with the addressing and change this to some other address, you, you could do it. That's where you go. Yes. Okay, what about the module configuration down the, road, down the way there? Well, based on the modules that you have, some of those modules might support um, more detailed configuration. In this case, we don't have anything that's a more advanced module like an Ecom module or counter IO or serial Like module. a high speed, if I, if I were to stop right now and I plug a high speed counter in here, then I, I take it that Doomore will automatically load the device driver or designer will load it into the Doomore PLC so that just works. Well, And I can come in here and configure it if I want to configure yes, it. Yes, for a, a module like counter IO, that's what this, this device conf module configuration is for, is you have to first configure the module to tell the module what it does then depending upon how you set up that module, you get different devices. Okay, that's where the device configuration comes in. First I do yes. the module, it's like a tree, it goes down. Yes. First we tell it the module, and then the device driver gets loaded for that. Just like in a laptop, we have a device driver for a mouse, it's automatic. When yes. you plug a mouse in, it's automatic these days. Yes. The do more architecture, we, we mimic the PC architecture where we, where we have devices and device drivers. Most devices are hardware devices like an Ethernet port or counter I.O. module or a serial port, but then there's also software devices. I have a serial port, but what protocol am I running on that port? It might be a Modbus Master, it might be Modbus Slave, it might be uh, program control where I'm doing an ad hoc, I'm writing ladder logic for it. Um, so okay. you'd have to do that configuration here. So, under so basically also under devices, I take it, if I want to put an email server in, so I mean, so it could send emails. I would load a device driver for the email. Yeah, what's good with the, the Ethernet version of the CPU, I can come in here and click on the SMTP email client, say OK. And it's a and software, it's, there. it's a software device. Yes, that running on the Ethernet. Port. Running on the Ethernet port in front of the PLC. Right. Okay, what about the I.O. mappings? That just shows you what you have, correct? Yes. That's what, now if I look at that right now, that shows me what the CPU discovered on PowerUp and what it automatically assigned to the card sitting in the rack. Most people just use automatic, automatic addressing. So this just shows you these eight points are showing up as X0 through X7. These next set of points are showing up X8 through X15. And that's an analog card, so it also shows up as a WX0 through 3. Right. That particular analog card has analog inputs on it, but also has some diagnostic bits which show up as inputs, Xs, right. if, and, they, and the card will flip them on and tell me there's a problem with that channel. Yes. That's specific to that card. Yes. Okay, now we've got, next one down, we've got the two-channel output card, which shows up as WYs. Yes. And we've got the eight digital outputs, which show up as Y0 through 7. So that's yes. the automatic mode. And if I want to, I can go down to manual and configure it. But that's where I do it. And again, what I'm going back to is all of this is under the umbrella of the system configuration. Yes. Okay, yes. what is the memory configuration The memory for? configuration, since you have so much memory in a do-more CPU, 
you might want to add more timers or use more C bits or just see what the addressing and what is the range of my C bits or my timer range. You come to this page to see what it is and maybe uh, increase the size or decrease them. Okay, so this here is where I come to, and we're going to have a separate video that goes into more details on configuring the memory. But out of the box, the top up there shows me what it comes with. Yes. And if you look at the top of this window up there where it says current and maximum size and space available, it shows me it comes with 262K of memory. They currently have used 103 for the defaults, and it which allows me 159K to create my own. And we'll go into more details in a different video on this, but again, all this comes under system configuration. I'm not going to five or six or seven different points in the software to configure things. It's all under one umbrella. Right. Okay. So all you got to do is set these things up and then hit the OK button, and they're all accepted. But if I want to out of the box, plug it in, the defaults will just work too. Yes. Okay, so there you have it. That's, that's where you go for system configuration, and we'll have separate videos that go into more details on things like actually configuring the memory and such.